Hi, John here. Today we're going to look at a fusible plug and we're going to look at its construction. We're going to look at how it works and then we're going to look at why we have the plugs installed in the first place. So let's have a quick look at the plug. I'll zoom around. We can see it's got a screw thread, this area here. That means it's easy to install. We can just screw it in. The copper body or this gold sort of colored body here indicates that it's made out of some sort of copper alloy. This means it will be brass, bronze or gun metal. That's typically the material employed for a fusible plug. If we look around here, we can see a black dot. This black gray dot signifies that it's made of a different material to the plug body itself. And we'll get back to that in a moment. Let's just take a cross section and see the black gray area runs through the entire plug body. Now the black gray area is actually referred to as a fusible alloy. It has a lower melting point than the plug body itself. That means if we expose the fusible plug to a high temperature, the black gray area will melt before the plug body itself. Now this is very important because this is the whole reason behind the fusible plug design. We want this black gray area to melt at a predetermined temperature. So we've designed this fusible alloy to melt at a certain temperature. Now why would we do that? Why would we want that half of the plug literally melts when we expose it to higher temperatures or elevated temperatures? Well, the reason is we want it to melt because we want the system, which let's imagine that's on the right side of the screen, we want the system pressure to be released out through the fusible plug to the left side of the screen. And we want this to occur when the fusible plug is exposed to an elevated temperature. Now it's a lot more clear if I explain this with an example. So let's go and have a look now at a compressed air vessel. Okay, so here we are. We're looking now at a compressed air vessel, also referred to as a pressure vessel. Now this cylinder that we're looking at, I'll just do a spin. This cylinder holds air between six to eight bar usually. That's a standard pressure setting that you'll find in many industrial sites. The problem is that this compressed air represents stored energy. Now it's all fine when we're operating between six and eight bar because it might have a design limit or a max allowable working pressure of 10, 12 or 14 bar. So we're well within limits if we're storing air at eight bar. The problem is when we have a fire near the pressure vessel, the heat from the fire will heat up the air and this will increase the pressure within the pressure vessel. Now, if we cannot release this pressure quickly, we're gonna get an explosion. So in order to avoid this, we'll have a safety relief valve, one or two of them, and they'll vent in the event that the pressure becomes too large. And we'll also have a fusible plug. Now the fusible plug is normally mounted somewhere near the top, perhaps between these two appendages here, so in the middle. And if the fire in the area was to heat up that fusible plug, we already know that the fusible alloy in the middle would melt and the compressed air would leak out then or be forced out and vent to atmosphere. So it's reducing the risk of an explosion should there be a fire. Now fusible plugs are not just installed on the compressed air vessels themselves, they will also be installed normally just after the compressor on the discharge pipe work. You'll also see fusible plugs in older water tube and fire tube boilers. They were used in the past as a last resort should your boiler be low firing. So if the water level had gone so low that it uncovered the fusible plug, which was normally submerged in water, the steam and the elevated temperature would melt the fusible alloy and the steam would then enter the furnace space or the firebox and it would extinguish the fire as well as vent the steam, at least to the firebox. But this was an absolute last precaution. And nowadays, fusible plugs in boilers are more of a rarity than standard. I should also mention that the fusible plug design for boilers is slightly different to the one that I've used here for compressed air systems, but the principle is more or less the same. Anyway, I hope you found that informative and interesting. If you've got any questions or comments, please do let me know. Thanks very much for your time.